Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. First of all, you guys know the drill. If you guys would please smash that like button, I'd really appreciate it. If you guys could leave a comment down below, I don't care what it is. It super helps the channel. It's Tuesday morning, it's bright and early. We're back in the shop. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update early on in the week here. We do have a 2010 Infiniti G37X. Now, this vehicle was at a local repair shop getting some work done. And when the technician was finished, he actually left the keys in the ignition in the parking lot. And someone walking by went ahead and helped themselves to the vehicle. And they actually got in a little bit of a fender bender, causing some damage. The vehicle was recovered. Um, for the most part, everything was fine. Just some minor cosmetic stuff. So the shop is covering um, repair damages. Um, so they are paying the bill. So anyways, we do have a quarter panel that was kind of crinkled. Um, went ahead and pulled the dent yesterday. And uh, there was a little bit of a ding here. Easy color being black. So uh, not too worried about blending and stuff like that. So we went ahead and uh, um, pulled the dents out, pulled a little ding out, put a first little fill in. We are going to rough this in this morning. Um, we do got to get this in high build today. And that way tomorrow we can go ahead and uh, move forward with prepping it, getting it in the spray booth and masking it up for paint. Um, so we will have this done by the end of the week. Um, the rear bumper also had a hole in it. It was punctured in the rear here. You can actually even see a small crack here as well, um, paint fracture. But it did kind of have a puncture here. You can kind of see um, where there was a hole, but it just kind of poked a little bit below the license plate. And uh, it's just obviously just needs to be fixed. And uh, we're obviously not gonna fix the hole. So we are gonna go ahead and throw a brand new rear bumper cover on there. And then uh, on the front here, Kind of hard to see because it's a little bit dark over here we actually had um a little bit of a scrape down below here nothing too crazy um it's just kind of like a little bumper scrape pretty easy fix there's lots of little rock chips and stuff like that so we are going to go ahead and color out this whole entire front bumper um there was a license plate bracket here off centered uh, which usually goes in the center and I thought that was kind of weird but when I removed it it turns out that uh, there was actually a crack behind the, the license plate bracket so it was kind of a clever way in uh, hiding the crack um, I'm guessing the previous owner of the car probably did that before selling um, not a big deal but I just couldn't just leave that so I'm glad I took that bracket out of the way and early on <laughs> before uh, getting it prepped and stuff because I did discover that crack and we went ahead and fixed the crack and there was a little bit of a warped area here um, the license plate bracket actually did look good off centered like that and I talked to the customer I said I can either uh, put it back in the same spot I can put it back in the center where it's supposed to go or I can even leave it off so there's no holes in your bumper at all he did want to put it back in the original spot um, I agreed that it actually looked kind of good there. It actually wasn't too bad I usually don't like off-center license plates, but uh, it actually looked pretty good there But I am glad we are doing a little bit of a repair here. So um, I went ahead and mixed up some 3m plastic repair material and uh, actually fixed the crack and uh, Now I just put a little skim coat of filler on there and uh, we'll go ahead and buzz that out and get it ready for primer so Just a couple small cosmetic repairs here. Uh, nothing too crazy um now inside the spray booth we have the coop in there we do have this kind of washed and ready we are going to be getting ready to do a photo shoot of this soon but uh i recently discovered that i might want to put a spoiler on it so before we do a photo shoot i might want to go ahead and get the spoiler that i want we might well go ahead and mount that up and uh we'll go ahead and get that ready for a photo shoot Mike's Integra, we got the spoiler on it as well, and uh, we're getting ready to get that thing in for a photo shoot as well. We do got to get the windshield replaced and the windows tinted all the way around uh, before the shoot as well. So we will be doing two photo shoots, getting some posters printed up, and uh, so pretty excited for that. We do have a customer's gem parts in here. Now this is uh, made by Polaris, it's called a gem, G-E-M. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with them. I'm not too familiar with them, so. Um, if I, I could I could be wrong on how I'm pronouncing it. But anyways, um, he did bring me an original hood at one point and uh, it was cracked in two positions and it had some heavy paint flaking and it was just gonna cause um, hours and hours and hours of repair and uh, which was fine, but I checked in with the customer. I was like, you sure you wanna proceed forward with this? Because this is probably gonna be about $1,500 
uh, before we even touch it with paint. So uh, it probably would have been like a $2,500 uh, deal. So I said, uh, if you can, if you can locate a new hood, that would make a lot of sense. So he actually got a new hood, two new fenders. Um, they were raw plastic, so we went ahead and got those prepped out with a 3M uh, prep paste. And uh, we got those um, prepped, ready to go. So we are hoping to uh, get these shot this week as well. And uh, um, we'll of course coat these with plastic adhesion promoter um, color them out and uh, bury them in clear and then uh, send them on our way. So the customer will save probably about uh, $1,500 to $2,000 in uh, repair time just for having new panels. So new panels are always nice. Now, of course, you know, sometimes repairing panels makes total sense. But in a situation like that, bumpers are a lot of time cheaper to replace versus uh, pay for hourly repairs. So a lot of times we replace bumpers. Very rarely do you see us do repairs unless it's just a minor cosmetic. Now, if I would have known that bumper was cracked behind the license plate frame, I probably would have said, hey, let's replace this bumper. But no big deal. Um, it was just a quick wham bam. So anyways, here we have our uh, Volkswagen Jetta Fast and Furious Tribute uh, lips, um, the front lip and the rear lip. They are pretty much prepped out. They need a little bit of repair still. They have a couple little pinholes, a couple little scrapes and blemishes, but nothing too crazy. We're gonna go ahead and just mix up some filler and we'll just come in with a razor blade and we'll go ahead and scrape in any little blemish you see like that with the guide coat left in and we'll go ahead and wet sand those little spots, uh, get it blown off and get them in the booth and get them ready to paint. So um, we are gonna get the side skirts going right after this. So we got the front lip, rear lip ready to go. I'm gonna walk over here and you can see we have our side skirts still in primer and guide coat we'll go ahead and prep those out as well and we'll go go ahead and get the whole lip kit in the spray booth and get it painted up so anyways i'm not going to give you guys too much of an update on the jetta right now um i'll have another video for that soon but also we have a 2021 ram 3500 now this is powered with a cummins diesel engine and we have this vehicle in for a exterior machine polish and a ceramic coat application. So um, it's already finished. It's looking beautiful. Um, took us all day yesterday to do that. Um, so we went ahead and uh, applied a R1 uh, coatings system on this vehicle. Now, basically what ceramic coating is, is basically like a screen protector for your vehicle. So when you get get a new cell phone a lot of times people go out and they get a case and a little screen protector um, basically this is a liquid applied um, coating that hardens like a shell and essentially is like another layer of clear coat over your paint so not only does it kind of help um, with UV protectant and uh, um, filling in some scratches and stuff but uh, it just also gives it a good protected coating to repel dirt, water, and things like that from the elements. So we use the R1 coating system. Um, we've tried a few other systems as well. We haven't found anything we like. Um, cheaper is not always better. Um, this system is pretty pricey. Um, you can check them at r1coatings.com. It is definitely not cheap to get, and especially when you're trying to coat a large vehicle like this, you wanna make sure you have plenty of material to go around because you also want to do at least two coats. Um, so when you buy a kit, generally it comes in a box, it'll come with your instructions like this, and uh, it'll kind of tell you how to do it. There also is some information online as well. Um, usually it'll come with a few microfiber towels, which uh, I don't have right now, but I of course just use my own. And then uh, I actually order a bunch of these applicators separately. I pretty much order all the materials separately because um, I end up with like extra sometimes, so I kind of just kind of keep stocked up with what I need. Uh, but when you buy a kit, it'll come with uh, whatever size bottle you come. Now, this is the R1 coating in here. You can see there is about a, a third of a bottle left. Um, so that's uh, enough to do a very, very small car. Um, a little goes a long way for sure. Um, so it gives you a prep detergent and a reviving spray. So this is a lot like just like a quick detailer that is safe to use on your um, ceramic coating. So here is the prep. This is what you use to remove any contaminants, dirt, and debris off your paint. Um, of course, we actually went through and pressure washed this vehicle and uh, foam cannoned it. And then we also did a uh, machine polish. And after that, we 
um, got it ready with the prep agent. After that was all done, we taped off a few things that needed to be taped off, like the plastic around the mirrors, stuff like that, and we went ahead and started doing our application. So when you do that, you actually want to, uh, it's saying here, to prep and wipe off with a clean microfiber towel, and then it wants you to work in small sections, approximately three feet by three feet. So I usually do panel by panel. Um, I work fast, so I will outline the panel. Now you'll basically put some drops of the um, ceramic coating on this applicator and you will go around the perimeter and then I'll do a cross hatch pattern and spread it around evenly. And a lot of times I'll let that kick for a couple minutes and while I do that, I'll go ahead and get the second panel ready. And as soon as I'm done doing that, I'll jump over here with my towels and instead of wiping it off like you would with wax, you're actually wiping it in. So um, it, it's pretty hard to wipe off completely, but you're actually um, wiping the material in, not off. So keep that in mind. Um, basically, it wants you to do that and repeat the steps two through four. And uh, so basically, by the time you get around the vehicle, it's been about an hour or so. Um, so you have enough time to start your second coat. So the second coat definitely helps um, get any areas that you might have missed, any areas that are thin, um, really helps kind of tie everything in together. So a second coat is definitely necessary when doing a good ceramic coating job. Um, but it really brought out the color in this. Now black, as you guys know, uh, just shows any and every blemish. Um, this isn't a brand new vehicle. It's close to new, but it's not brand new. So it has had some wear and tear and some exposure to the elements. But uh, I do want to show you guys a little bit of uh basically how it works here so it will repel the elements you can see the water just running off there you can see it just completely ran off the panel so obviously that doesn't show a lot but it just kind of shows how it repels the uh dirt and uh water uh debris stuff like that makes your vehicle a lot easier to clean um gives it a good uv protectant as well and uh, if taken care of it can last uh over uh, a couple of years it says so um, anyways we do like the r1 coating system um very happy with it um we actually um installing these uh coatings um you will get spots that uh you have to pull it out in the natural light and it helps see some of the spots you might have missed and uh if you've missed them they are very hard to remove because as this coating hardens and you're supposed to let it harden overnight before you deliver it um, as this coating hardens it becomes basically like a permanent coating on your vehicle so you will notice when you pull it out in the natural light you'll have maybe missed a couple spots as far as wiping it in and it's very important to kind of get a good look at it before it fully cures so you can go ahead and wipe it in and uh, uh, make sure you get those spots removed if not you have to polish them off basically and it's kind of start over from scratch so um, you have to be very careful and follow the instructions thoroughly when installing these coatings. All right, guys, that's about all I have for you. So if you guys have any questions about the R1 coating system or anything else, go ahead and leave a comment. I will always reply. So if you guys haven't yet, please like this video, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one. Ooh, like LeBron, though, or like Bonzo. Ooh, I'm a baller, yeah, shot caller, yeah. They love me, you can't touch me, nah, can't trust me. I'm too lucky. Look at me, look at you, what you see, what you do.